Hey everybody, I'm Tamara and today I'm going to give you some advice on identity disturbances. Who am I, says the borderline personality disorder. When borderlines have an other or a favorite person, it helps the borderline to be steady and create an identity for themselves. Who am I without you to mirror? If they don't have their favorite person, it may trigger them to not understand who they are. And maybe not all borderlines feel this way, but those who do are left scrambling without that person. The self was not feel fully developed during the bonding stages of parenting for a borderline, or perhaps genetics played a role in keeping that from happening. Babies around nine months of age become aware of object permanence, which describes a child's ability to know that objects continue to exist, even though they can no longer be seen or heard. Isn't that fascinating? This concept was discovered by child psychologist Jean Piaget and is an important milestone in a baby's brain development. This concept also applies to people. When a person leaves a room, do they still exist? Someone who suffers from BPD may not be so sure. They did not learn this at a subconscious level at an early age. It can be very scary to know that is this person still there or not? So they check, recheck, and check again to see if the person they're attached to is still in their life because nothing remains. They may not have had a steady, stable person in their life when their brains were forming around object permanence as babies. So it's not ingrained in them the way that it is for the average person. Teenagers and even young adults and even sometimes older adults have periods of insecurity in life when they're trying to figure out their purpose. Am I cool or am I a nerd? Am I weird? Am I assertive or shy? How can I fit in and be accepted by people? Trying to figure out who one is can be a daunting task. What do I like? How do I matter in this world? How would I describe my personality? This is a different concept than borderlines who feel that they have no identity at all. They may even have gender identity issues because they are scrambling to hold on to a self. Imagine being a blank canvas with nothing written on it. They struggle to articulate or describe their personality when asked to give attributes of themselves. Blankness avails. I am who you say I am, says one sophisticated potential borderline. Who you say I am is who I am because I have no inner concept of who I am. So you define it for me because when asked point blank who I am, I have no idea. There is emptiness inside. And when they do describe themselves, it may be completely different than how others see them. They may say, I'm a very nice person, says the borderline. They may do a lot of helpful and kind things for people, but their words are brash, harsh, aggressive, and critical. So others may not see them as nice, but instead demanding, insensitive, and insistent. So again, who am I without you to mirror my favorite person? I am who you are. That's why borderlines have a favorite person or a shelf filled with favorite people, because we are pseudo attached. Since I missed the bonding as a baby, that communicated to my brain that I am fully whole, that the world is safe, that mom and dad are always there meeting my needs, that when I toddled away from my caregivers, I could walk back and find them where I left them. That concept was lost for borderlines. So they are consumed like a moth to a flame to fill that empty space through an other a favorite person who will love them unconditionally, who they can be one with. They are me and I am them. That person is their identity. It is who they are. BPDs can also take on extreme identities because they feel empty inside. So they want to make sure that they can be seen and get feedback on who they are. They might have green and pink hair that looks like a beautiful watermelon. They may be too exposed or too wild or revealing in their appearance. They may dress like the opposite gender and then change back. They may go through a punk rock stage. They may develop body dysmorphia. I remember an Anglo male who was on the news because he decided 
that he would identify as Asian, so he had lots of plastic surgeries to give himself what he considered Asian features. It just shows the pain and agony and desperation and finding a self that explains the self. If the self is always fleeing, then how safe and comfortable can one feel inside? BPDs must learn a variety of emotions, but if, if there is no object permanence, no sense of self, how does one identify sadness, something you can't see or feel or touch? Emotions are also a hard thing to develop past a certain point. So they may want to practice things like touching a feather or other such objects and really work on what does it feel like and taking it into the self. And yet, BPDs have some of the most colorful, exuberant, and interesting personalities of anyone on the planet. People often want to emulate them because there's something different about them. They are more unique than your average person, more willing to take risk in their appearance than the average person. So BPDs can start there with embracing their bigger than life personalities and knowing that while they may be struggling with self-hatred, others are viewing them with great admiration in so many ways, like they are the coolest people in the world. So if you are struggling with your love life in any way, check out my book, Flip the Script on Love by Tamara Hunter Zion, and also my book, The Workplace Narcissist by Tamara Hunter Zion. And also let us know if you struggle with identity issues and what you do to make yourself feel better or to create an identity or if that's something that you never do or if you have any tips that can help other people. So until the next video, bye!